Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. There are five causes which render wholesome discipline impossible. Egoism, delusion, carelessness, illness, and idleness. Please continue watching to find out more about the wisdom of Jainism. Vegan. What else to show God's love within us? Aap se milkar acha laga. Virtuous viewers, I just said nice to meet you in Hindi. I'm Jairaj. The caring Indian people wish you happiness and abundance in heaven's loving grace. May Lord Mahavira bless you. The religion of Jainism, traditionally called Jain Dharma, originated in ancient India. Jain Dharma emphasizes the value of right perception, right knowledge, and right conduct. Through inner reflection and sincere practice of these principles, one can attain moksha, a realization of the soul's true nature. The concept of ahimsa or non-violence is also central to Jainism. Thus, with respect for all life, Jain practitioners follow a pure vegan or plant-based diet. The Jain lineage includes 24 Trithankaras or beings who share their enlightenment with others. The Trithankaras teachings comprise the Agam Sutras which are the holy scriptures of Jainism. The 24th and last Trithankara was Lord Mahavira whose name means Great Hero. Born into a royal family in 599 BC, Prince Mahavira decided as a young man to pursue a solitary spiritual life. After 12 years of intensive meditation, he attained Kevalagyana or the highest wisdom. Lord Mahavira was known to face all obstacles with acceptance and forgiveness. He also shared discourses on spiritual truths which formed the basis of present-day Jainism. Supreme Master Ching Hai has offered tribute to the spiritual greatness of Lord Mahavira as during lectures given in Taiwan, also known as Formosa on various occasions. I don't know if anyone in the history of mankind could have done or could be doing or will be doing such an ascetism, such a sacrifice like the Lord Mahavira. We really salute him and are grateful. <laughs> to all that he has to endure. For enlightenment, for the sake of others, yes. All these sufferings are not for naught. They would benefit the world in some way or another even without the Lord Mahavira knowing, or even without the world people knowing or being grateful for. We now invite you to listen to excerpts from Uttaradhyana, one of the most important scriptures in Jainism. Eleventh lecture, The Very Learned I shall explain in due order the right discipline of a houseless monk who has got rid of all worldly ties, listen to me. He who is ignorant of the truth, egoistical, greedy, without self-discipline, and who talks loosely, is called ill-behaved and void of learning. There are five causes which render wholesome discipline impossible. Egoism, delusion, carelessness, illness, and idleness. The eight causes of the discipline called virtue, namely, not to be fond of mirth, to control one's self, not to speak evil of others, not to be without discipline, not to be of wrong discipline, not to be covetous, not to be choleric, to love the truth, for they influence the discipline called virtue. A monk who is liable to the following 14 charges is called ill-behaved and does not reach nirvana. 
if he is frequently angry, if he perseveres in his wrath, if he spurns friendly advice, if he is proud of his learning, if he finds fault with others, if he is angry even with friends, if he speaks evil even of a good friend behind his back, if he is aggressive in his assertions, if he is malicious, egoistical, greedy, without self-discipline, if he does not share with others, if he is always unkind, then he is called ill-behaved. But for the following 15 good qualities, he is called well-behaved. If he is always humble, steady, free from deceit and curiosity, if he abuses nobody, if he does not persevere in his wrath, if he listens to friendly advice, if he is not proud of his learning, if he does not find fault with others, if he is not angry with friends, if he speaks well even of a bad friend behind his back, if he abstains from quarrels and rows, if he is enlightened, polite, decent, and quiet, then he is called well-behaved. He who always acknowledges his allegiance to his teacher, who has religious zeal and ardor for study, who is kind in words and accents, deserves to be instructed. As a water put into a shell shines with a doubled brilliancy, so do the piety, fame and knowledge of a very learned monk. As a trained kanthaka steed, Buddha's horse person, whom no noise frightens, exceeds all other horses in speed, so a very learned monk is superior to all others. As a valiant hero bestriding a trained horse, with heralds singing out to his right and left, has no equal, neither has a very learned monk. As a strong and irresistible elephant of sixty years, surrounded by his females, has no equal, neither has a very learned monk. As a sharp-horned, strong-necked bullock, the leader of the herd, is a fine sight, so is a very learned monk. As a proud lion with sharp fangs who brooks no assault is superior to all animals, so is a very learned monk, superior to all men. As a Vasudeva, the god with the conch, discus and club, who fights with an irresistible strength, has no equal, neither has a very learned monk. As a universal monarch with his fourfold army and great power, the possessor of the fourteen attributes of a king has no equal, neither has a very learned monk. As Sakra, the thousand-eyed, the wielder of the thunderbolt, the fortress destroyer, the king of gods, has no equal, neither has a very learned monk. As the rising sun, the dispeller of darkness, who burns as it were with light, has no equal, neither has a very learned monk. As the moon, the queen of the stars, surrounded by the asterisms, when she is full at full moon, has no equal, neither has a very learned monk. As a well-guarded storehouse of merchants, which is filled with grain of many kinds, has no equal, neither has a very learned monk. As the best of gambu trees, called Sudarsana, which is the abode of the presiding deity, has no equal, neither has a very learned monk. As the best of rivers, the ocean flowing stream Sita with its dark waters has no equal, neither has a very learned monk. As the best of hills, high Mount Mandara, on which various plants shed a bright luster, has no equal, neither has a very learned monk. As the ocean of inexhaustible water, the delight of Swayambhu, a self manifested image of a deity, which is full of precious things of many kinds, has no equal, neither has a very learned monk. Monks who equal the ocean in depth, who are difficult to overcome, are frightened by nobody or nothing, and are not easily assailed, who are full of extensive learning and take care of themselves, will go to the highest place after their karma has been annihilated. Therefore, seeker after the highest truth, study the sacred lore, in order to cause yourself and others to attend perfection. Thus I say. Twelfth Lecture Harikesa Harikesa Bala was born in a family of Swapakas, Kandalas, 
he became a monk and a sage possessed of the highest virtues who had subdued his senses. He observed the rules with regard to walking, begging, speaking, easing nature, and receiving and keeping of things necessary for a monk, controlled himself and was always attentive to his duty. He protected from sin his thoughts, speech, and body, and subdued his senses. Once on his begging tour, he approached the enclosure of a Brahmanical sacrifice. When the priests saw him coming up, emaciated by austerities in a miserable condition and with the poorest outfit, they laughed at him, the ruffians. Stuck up by pride of birth, those killers of animals, who did not subdue their senses, the unchaste sinners, made the following speech. Who is that dandy coming there? He is swarthy, dreadful, with a turned up nose, miserably clad, a very devil of a dirty man with a filthy cloth put on his neck. Who are you, you monster, or for what purpose have you come here, you miserably clad devil of a dirty man? Go, get away. Why stand you there? At this turn, the Yaksha, who lived in the Tinduka tree, had compassion on the great sage and making his own body invisible, spoke the following words. I am a chaste Shramana, controlling myself. I have no property, nothing belonging to me, and do not cook my food. I have come for food which is dressed for somebody else at the time when I call. You give away, eat, and consume plenty of food. Know that I subsist by begging. Let the mendicant get what is left of the rest. Think of the cruelty to animals that meat eating involves and its effect on those who inflict and those who behold it, how it destroys the tenderness with which we should regard these creatures of God. Ellen Goldwhite, Vegetarian Truth-seeking viewers, it's been a pleasure to have your company on today's Words of Wisdom. Please join us again tomorrow for part 2 of this program. Coming up next is Giotto, the forerunner of Renaissance painting, part 2 of 2 here on Supreme Master Television. May we all cherish precious human life in order to learn about the Divine and return to our heavenly abode sooner. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash WOW. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule et suprememastertv.com bar oblique WOW. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule y suprememastertv.com barra inclinada WOW. Mana Nitrudut Alden Hiller Kartak Dashle Haik, Supreme Master TV, Tikkom, Tashadura Schedule. Bottom, Supreme Master TV, Tikkom, Tashadura WOW.